Hey there, Shubi Doodlers. How are you doing? Well, if you have anything to do with digital artwork, you will know that you have to store the finished files somewhere. And what are you going to do in five years' time when you think, where's that piece of work I did? How are you going to find it? Is it still going to be there? Will you have stored it? Well, I had an email this week from Anna Goodson, who is the first person to contact me as the drawing doctor. You too can ask me to help with your drawing problems. See it in the box down below. But Anna wrote and asked me, Hi Shu, I've just started an illustration degree and am aware that I will need to save and store a lot of digital artwork. I want to know, I wanted to know if you have any recommendations for storage devices or apps. Thanks, Anna. Well, Anna, this is something I think about a lot. I have been producing image files for a very long time. In the beginning, I would use floppy disks, which would sort of take a maximum of about 2.8 megabytes, something like that, not a lot. And, uh, and then I went up to something called a SideQuest disk, which was a massive box which you would stick in uh, to another box and it would <laughs> it sound like a jet engine starting up. Uh, that would store about 80 megabytes. And then along came the wonderful zip drive, which was a tiny little thing about that size, which would store about 100 megabytes. And the whole industry just went straight over to those. They were brilliant. Everyone <laughs> got very excited about that. And then came recordable CD-ROMs and that changed everything. I thought that's fantastic. Uh, and once in a while I would burn a CD to store everything, clear it off my computer, make more space. And then a little while ago I thought, oh, I, I need to go and get those files. And oh my goodness, the CD-ROMs were starting to flake and my new computer just couldn't read them. I had to get an old laptop off eBay just to be able to read the old CD-ROMs. <laughs> so, uh, so I managed to save all those and I put them onto external hard drives. And then one day the hard drive in my Mac gave up and it just died. Luckily I have a backup. So I used Time Machine to back up onto what's called a NAS drive. Uh, which I have on a network. It all gets very complicated. But it made me realise that hard drives are not that secure either. I replaced that hard drive with a solid state drive. And with a bit of research, I found, well, they have a lifetime too. And all these things do. Now we have uh, online storage, public cloud storage, as it's called. If you've got your own little secure system, that's private cloud storage. If you're buying space on the internet, that's called public cloud storage. I wouldn't mind storing everything up online, but that would be a backup for me. I would like to know that I've got something solid that I own in case the internet goes down, in case the company who's storing it goes down, in case they get attacked and who knows what could happen. I remember in the old days, there were stories of people who were really paranoid, who would have double copies of their floppy disks, one of which would be in a Tupperware container buried in the garden <laughs> so that they knew that they got a backup backup. And uh, where do you stop? I've been looking at prices. You can buy these sort of personal little blocks of data storage. You can get two terabytes, which is like 2000 gigabytes uh, for about a hundred pounds plus. And that is like having a hard drive up on the internet. You, it gets a bit confusing with things like iCloud, which I, I, re I really don't like because if you say, oh, oh yes, you know, sort of back up my files, it backs up your files and it puts them up on iCloud, but it keeps them still on your Mac. Um, or and, and it will be the same on PCs, I'm sure. So what you're really trying to do is to make space on your PC so you can keep working. And, and I know I have a terabyte disk on my Mac and it fills up in no time because I'm using video files, which are even bigger. So some of my video files are, are sort of gigabytes and, and those gigabytes turn into terabytes very, very quickly. So basically what I do is I buy these. This is a four terabyte hard drive. And I like this one is because you just plug it straight in. It takes the power from your computer. I've got old ones which are like 20 years old, which you have to plug in and they take time to speed up. But you know, things have improved over time. Four terabytes sounds like a lot. Uh, and if you're just doing Photoshop files, drawing things like that, that might last you a year. Uh, four terabytes, I'm kind of feeling is going to 
last me a, a sort of a couple of months maybe because <laughs> as I say video files take up a lot of space now this is what I have moved on to these are about twice as expensive but feel they're going to last longer so this is an SSD a solid state drive um, and it's uh, USB-C so it's much faster to uh, up and down the data the life of these depends on how much you are writing and rewriting them if you are just storing Basically, you are writing until it is full, and then that is it. It's when you delete files and write over them, that's when you start to wear these things out. But, you know, it, it's, it's got years before you're actually going to do that. So just uploading and storing files on these kinds of things, uh, I think is quite a good bet. The problem with this is this is mechanical and there are very delicate parts in here. And if you <laughs> drop it, <laughs> Um, it, 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 you can really damage it and you'll have to sort of send it off and hope somebody can get some kind of data off it for you. They are also prone to damp, um, weather, heat, all sorts of other things like that. Everything is. So what you might like to do is to store locally on stuff like this and then get an online service that you can upload to. And then somebody else is then responsible <laughs> for making sure that your copy is there. So in theory, they're backing up their backup in case something happens to them. But I always feel once you outsource something like that, you can't entirely trust them. So the other thing you want to think about is that uh, in five, ten years, you're probably going to want to uh, download all this data. <laughs> And put it onto something new and in five or ten years time there might be something incredible some sort of recording orb or I don't know what it will be you know it might even be biological who knows uh, and you can put it all onto there for the next five years until the next big thing comes along but as I say make sure you have a printout as well of, of sort of finished work so that you can access that really really quickly <laughs> far, far more quickly than finding old hard drives do I have any recommendations? I would go for the big names, really. So SanDisk, Crucial, Seagate, those kind of names. You could be tempted by a four terabyte disk for something that is like the quarter of the price of what you would expect. Don't don't buy those. You just don't know what they are. Their, their solid state disks are around now at, at sort of much, much cheaper prices. But I have found if you try to store anything on them, it's like trying to squeeze stuff in there. And I really do not trust them at all. And this is your life's work you're dealing with. So you really want to afford to buy the best. When it comes to online storage, I really can't recommend anybody because I don't know that much about it. And I personally don't store anything online because I just have this innate worry that somebody else is looking after my life's work. <laughs> and it can go like that. There is another thing which has got a NAS disk. So your internet router as it comes in has got lots of ethernet boxes on the back. You can plug a, a NAS disk into the back of that and it sits away. And that's really good for doing backups of your computer and it will take a copy, be constantly copying and updating. Uh, and if you've got Time Machine or something like that, it will keep uh, backups for things you in, in case you delete something by mistake. I did that recently uh, and it was like, oh, and and I went back and I found and and it was something I'd only created a couple of hours beforehand, but it had already sort of copied and made a copy, and I could re recover it after I not just deleted it but emptied the bin as well. <laughs> so that was good. And you on your NAS disk, um, you can say, can I? Ha I'll, I'll have a section over here for storage as well. So you can uh, sort of put storage stuff on your NAS disk, but it tends to be quite slow and frustrating, I find. So I like to have sort of sessions where I just just completely empty whole folders onto here and, and then wipe them off my main disk. And I know uh, I don't need to worry about them anymore because I've got them saved. I'll just finish off by saying when, <laughs> when I was younger, I was a bit slapdash with uh, how I named files and things like that and I got into such a mess. So what would be really good is is to get into the habit of having a project folder and then within that folder you can have um, sort of subfolders and, and for each 
file, particularly something like a Photoshop file, if you're using lots of different bits that you're adding in, um, you know, sort of all those little sections, all, all those little image files will go in that folder to create the one Photoshop file. Going into layers, once you start making files with layers, those files get bigger. InDesign files and things like that, keep it all within one big project folder because suddenly you will find InDesign will go, I can't find this file because you took that file from somewhere over there and that's now on a disk over there which is in the cupboard under the stairs and you don't know where it is. So do keep everything neatly in project folders so that the main file like InDesign or something like that will be able to find all the little image files that it requires. And that does take a little bit of organisation and <laughs> creating good habits. I hope that all makes some kind of sense. And if it doesn't, <laughs> put your questions in the box below and maybe I can help a bit further. If you've got any drawing problems or any problems related to drawing uh, like Anna's, you can contact me, go to my website, click the Drawing Doctor button and you'll be able to send me a message and maybe even upload an image of something you're having a problem with. And I may then make a video for you. Well, thanks for watching and make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos. And in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 saving, saving, saving all that work. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.